Good morning, Safir users. Today, we are going to learn how to make a parametric model in GM Safir. And in the meantime, we will learn three new commands, namely symmetries, how to create a quarter of a circle, and the coherence command. The section we want to create today is a hot rod section, is HEB 400. So we start by defining the geometry, elementary entities add, and we will add a few points. So we have to be careful. The first point has the X coordinate 0, decimal 0, 0, 6, 7, 5, and the Y coordinate is 0. Add. Then we have a point at the same X coordinate, but the Y coordinate is 0, decimal 1, 4, 9. Add. We now need a point at x coordinate 0, decimal 0, 3, 3, 7, 5, with the same y coordinate 0, decimal 1, 4, 9. Add. Now we want another point at the same x coordinate, but we go up in the y direction 0, 1, 7, 6, add, the same y coordinate, but we go to the right in the x direction to 0, decimal, 1, 5, 0, add, we go up vertically to 0, decimal, 200, add, and we go back to the left, zero decimal zero 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 add and we have our points here they will be used to create the upper right corner of the section now we add a few lines one from here to here one from here to here another one, and the last one, Q. We need to hold fillet, circle arc. We follow the instructions here, select the start point here, select the center point here. This is why we have added this point and select the end point here and Q to above. This is one quarter of the section. Now we must use symmetries. This is here in geometry, elementary entities transform symmetry. The first symmetry, we will do it in the x direction. Look, here is the axis x. The x direction apparently corresponds to the plane A. So remember that x, y, z could be written as A, B, C. Okay, first, second, third axis, first, second, third plane. So as we want to make the symmetry in the first direction, we type here 1 in the plane A and 0 in B and C, also 0 in D, I don't know why. We want to apply the symmetry on copy. We must select the objects that we want to copy in the symmetry. So control click, drag the mouse and control click here and everything has been selected we can type e and we have now half of the section we will do it again but now in the direction y so this is a zero for plane a and one for plane b apply symmetry on copy okay control click drag the mouse control click everything has been selected e to end so i have my section i cannot create a surface based on these lines why because when i used the first symmetry for example this line was copied on the left but the left point of that line was also copied and became the right point of the other curve so here i have two points and these two lines are not touching each other. Okay, although visually speaking they are, but numerically speaking they are not. And I have the same problem here. 
and here and here. So these lines don't make a, a continuous loop line. So in order to solve that problem, it's quite easy. I have to use a specific command, which is called coherence. And if I do that, I, the, all the points which were duplicate are now a single point. So I create a surface, that's elementary entity, add plane surface. I have to select one of the lines, but I have to select a line which is oriented in the appropriate direction. So to be sure, I want to see the direction of the line. So I press Q to abort, I was not ready. Double click, or geometry option, and here I click and drag to the right, so that uh, it's a little bit too much, so I click and drag to the left. So I see the directions of all lines, and I have to select as a first line of my surface, a line which would rotate around the section in a counterclockwise direction. So for example, this line. So now I'm ready to add the plane surface, and I select as a boundary that one and they have all been selected i can type e and q and now again i come in the all geometry visibilities maybe i don't need the directions anymore so i click here and go to the left and i can finish so we can check now that we have indeed a surface all geometry options, surface label, we have a surface here, okay. So the rest would be normal procedure, applying physical groups, for example, with curve to apply the fire curve and surface to apply the material. But that's not what we want to highlight here. What we want to highlight is the capability to make parametric models. So we go here, we want to edit the script. And what is important is the position of the points. We will create some variables. First, a variable called age, and we will give the value 0 decimal 400. A variable b, the value is 0 decimal 300. A, a variable called t web, the value is decimal 0 0.135. A variable called tfl with the value 0 decimal 0 and a variable r with a value of 0 decimal 0 to 7. So now we can change here the numbers by variables. So let's first look at the x coordinates. If we have this coordinate, 6.75 millimeters, that's because that's half of t web. So we can write here t web divided by 2, and here also, t web divided by 2. Where well, we have 33 millimeters, that's because we have, so that's t web divided by 2 plus r, and here also. where we have 150 millimeters, that's because we have B over two. B over two. And here B divided by two. Let's look at the Y coordinate. If we have 200 millimeters, that's H over two. H 
divided by 2. Here also, h divided by 2. When we have 176 millimeter, that's h divided by 2 minus t flange. Here also, h divided by 2 minus t flange. And when we have 149 millimeters, that's h divided by 2 minus t flange minus r. And the same here. h divided by 2 minus t flange minus r. And basically, we have the same model, but we can close and save the script. And we will check that if we reload the script, we should have the same geometry. Ah, we have lost something, which I have to check. So we open the script. There must be an error. And the error is here. There is a missing character. If I close, save, and reload the script, now I have the section. So the good thing now is that if I want to change my section, I just have to edit the script, and I will check one by one the effect of changing the variables. For example, if I change 0.4 into 0.8, I save, and if I reload the script, I have doubled the depth of the section. So I edit, I put this value back to 0.4, and now I change this one, for example, to 0.6. Save. Reload. OK, everything is fine. The section is still continuous. I just have changed one variable. So I edit again. So that was 0.8. 3. Let's double the width of the web. Let's say 0 0.235. Reload. See, the web is much wider. And then let's put it back to where it has to be. Let's make very thick flanges. Save, reload, correct, edit, and let's make now a bigger root fillet. Yes, it is. So we can go back to the appropriate value. So you see that if you have your own code that can write this script, in fact, or, or you can take the one which has been written once and you can just change one variable at the top of the script, then you have a new section and you can create the input file for this new section. If you have applied the Saphir properties, they will remain. Okay, All these properties will remain if you just change one of these parameters. If you have applied physical groups, like fire curves, materials, they will remain. What you have to redo every time is the mesh. Because, of course, if you change one of the parameters, you change the size of the section. And so the nodes, which are used to build your finite elements, change position. So the mesh has to be recreated. But you see, it is very easy to make a parametric model once you have the first one. We won't run the case, because we would learn nothing new. And with that, I thank you for your attention.